Thank you for staying with us. Let's begin with the menace of fake news and hate speech, which is threatening this peaceful and credible conduct of the 2023 election. The Presidential Campaign Council of the Ruling All Progressive Congress, APC, wrote a petition to the National Broadcasting Commission, NBC, against Arise Television for allegedly airing programs to disparage its candidate, Bola Ahmed Tinubu. The petition addressed to the Director General of NBC, Balarabi, six invocation of sanctions against the media house over its reports on the 1993 money laundering and drug-related case against Tinubu. The Special Advisor on Media, Communications and Public Affairs of the Campaign Council, Delialaki, said the case in question, which did not indict their candidate, has since been settled after interrogation and correspondences between the then Inspector General of Police, Tafa Balogu, and the United States government in 20, 2003. Let me start with you, Wali. We have ethics in our profession. Mm. We have um, rules and regulations guiding us. So we have our regulatory body, that's the um, NBC. And uh, mm. primarily, even if you don't belong to any of this body, we have ethics and code of conduct yeah. that coordinate and streamline our practice. But mm. what we've been saying lately with the advent of social media and some other even new media, mm. um, traditional media houses, sourcing their news from the social media, it's been challenging. Well, I think, first of all, let us get it very clear that um, nobody is above mistake. People can commit innocent errors. But there are some errors that could be very, that could be pardonable. There are some that are deliberate, that are suspect, that even make the journalists to look very stupid and foolish sometimes. And then in our career as a media person, uh, the issue being debated, I was in Punch in 1999, and I was the head of investigation desk. And I remember that these issues came up, you know, and they were debated and exhausted, you know, exhaustively in the media. But it appears that every electoral system, people bring up this issue over and over again. And ridiculously, professors, people that are supposed to be educated, you know, keep on raising this issue over and over again. So um, I'm, I'm really surprised that a, a reputable media organization, you know, we either grant an interview or use a statement from INEC, you know, without making any effort to verify. It's just a phone call away or a test message that will cost just four naira to find out whether this statement from INEC claiming that someone is being investigated for drug is correct or not. And of course, in journalism, when you write a story, it passes through rigorous tests. Sometimes before stories are published, you take them to legal departments. You know, we do this because we want a media organization to be credible. We want the media organization to enjoy public trust. We also want the um, media organization to practice journalism according to code of conduct defined by Nigerian Press Council and also the Nigerian Union of Journalists. So I think professionally, you know, it's ridiculous. It diminishes our status as media people when we begin to allow people to use our medium to spread falsehood. And the dangers are significant. You know, in uh, Rwanda, in Syria alone, such media reports were some of those things that foiled genocide. Because when you begin to issue out false reports and people begin to, you know, recycle, uh, to recycle things that are not true, it could set political opponents against each other. And I think such a thing is a threat even to stability and to the survival of the country, you know. Um, and that is why we always urge media people to, to be more responsible, to be more responsive, to be more professional in dealing with issues, especially at this very sensitive period. So I think what the TV did, TV station did was an embarrassment. And it actually further diminishes, you know, the reputation that anybody may attach to so, uh, such an organization. But it's significant that the media organization has apologized. And we hope that uh, it will not happen again. Journalists must not substitute their own consciousness for the consciousness of, the, of their political principles. Their responsibility is to report in a non-partisan manner, in a very objective way, so that we can be able to balance the various interests that are contending on the field of play. Yeah, the first of all, from the um, public affairs person of INEC, 
He's about the most accessible person. You call him, he's always willing, ever willing to grant any interview at any given time. At any point in time, he has been on our show separately. And we expect that a station that is, they have a bureau in um, Abuja, and um, INEC is just still true. So if you see a press statement like that, duly signed by the same individual, nobody could check. And they went straight like that and hit the airwaves. You know, Not social media and right now, you know, traditional in, media in and business, people that are meant to be guarded. In this business, it is a race of the fastest. I want to be the first to break the news. Unfortunately, that has allowed many of the cardinal rules of the profession to be broken. Just as Wale has said, it is very unfortunate that a somewhat reputable media house will allow itself to be led by the nose in this, in this kind of thing. And I want to say that this, this thing is not talking, is turning to the tail wagging the dog instead of the other way around. Now, the social media is managed, mostly managed by mock rakers. They are not, most of them are not journalists. The media should be a place where people will come to seek for information, not for the, 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 the journalists to go to the social media to be seeking for information. And when you get it there, you need to confirm. This has brought home to what an Italian writer once said. I want to paraphrase him. He said, in the days of old, what an idiot will say in the beer parlor and be hushed down is today promoted as wisdom on social media. You know, even in a beer parlor, there is some level of sanity. And a drunk man will say something, and people will dismiss it and say, no, no, no. But in the social media forum now, it has become something everybody, because there is no uh, regulation and all that. The, what this has shown us is that as journalists, as reporters, as gatekeepers, we must be very, very careful. I always tell my students that, look, your news must be timely. But at the same time, when it is timely, you have to be conscious. For every information you get, you must, the first thing a journalist must have is that sense of doubt. Even me, as your lecturer, if I tell you something, you must have some level of doubt in, in, in the authenticity of what I'm telling you. When this statement came, as you have said, Okoye is a very, very accessible man, no matter how late. Mm. They could have got back to him that, we got a statement signed by you. Is it really true? Because this is a very, very important matter. The document was forged. And the f truth of the matter is that is it, what, is it that you want to say, oh, I first saw it on so-so-so TV. That's why it becomes... No, 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 no. Sometimes it leads to the downfall of such. We all remember there was this lady, James Cook, in the U.S. in the 70s, 80s, who wrote a story about a, a guy, a boy who was a drug addict and all that, and she got the Pulitzer Prize. The Pulitzer Prize is the biggest prize in journalism in the U.S. Years, uh, months down the line, it was discovered that the whole series of stories were lies. She had to pay dearly for it. The medium that published it also had a lot of struggle before it could get over it. So in, in our way of rushing to publish the news, no matter what, there must be that caution in your mind, especially when it involves such sensitive matters, and at this time. NBC, the NBC wielded the big stick, the, the station was fined, and the decision even went ahead to even um, sanction one of its um, deputy um, director of this. Yeah, there, there is no doubt that um, the TV stations definitely have uh, has some, a lot of professionals who I think will be embarrassed, yeah. you know, by what actually happened. You know, uh, the lesson is that you must not allow political profiteers
to take over the media space. The ombudsman must always be on alert. They must watch out for journalists who want to use the medium for parochial, uh, to promote their own parochial uh, profit or their own uh, personal gains. So I, I believe that there are a lot of professional journalists who are in that media institution, and uh, I'm sure they were you know, embarrassed by what happened. And uh, I hope they are going to do the needful by ensuring that this kind of thing does not happen again. Because that, there's what is called deterioration with the public. After some time, people will no longer watch your TV yeah. because they know that, you know, you just give them lies and lies mm. all the time. And before you know it, that media station institution may collapse. We have Nobody, you know, all over have the place. All over the, mm. What are sustained punch and guardian and vanguard? It's you know, credibility. Credibility over years since 1970s. So if you just come out, you can feast on lies and propaganda. The time will be very short for you to live.